Tracking coronavirus tonight before the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, the world was confronted by the SARS coronavirus back in the early 2000s. Remember that? Well, tonight, the story of an East Tennessee woman who is a SARS survivor. She contacted WATE 6 on your side consumer reporter Don Dare to let others know just how serious COVID-19 is. Well, that's right, Lori. The outbreak of SARS in late 2002 and 2003 was a warning of our vulnerability in the face of Mother Nature. It was an epidemic that brought part of the world on the edge of panic. While the worldwide numbers of those affected by SARS is very small in comparison to the present COVID-19 pandemic, the virus SARS brought a lot of suffering to a woman who lives outside of Lenore City. That's a good girl. Debbie Johnson and her husband Dale enjoy life to the fullest. He almost lost Debbie 18 years ago when she was exposed to the contagious virus called SARS. The severe acute respiratory distress. SARS? Yes, definitely. Debbie said she was working at a motel off I-40 when she contracted the virus, which at first she believed was the flu. Health experts say SARS was transmitted primarily from person to person. It had to be through the motel work. I was doing the desk, I was in the rooms with people traveling. It's the worst nightmare anyone could ever go through. Came down with it in December 2002. To start out with, I thought I had pleurisy. It was like a jab, jabbing pain in my lung in the right side. From there, within five days later, I was in the hospital. Mrs. Johnson says she was hospitalized for more than a month. Even after I left there, I had to go into rehab because when I came out of the hospital, I weighed 76 pounds. So you, you consider yourself very fortunate just to be here? Yes, yes. And they said I was very lucky to be alive. In 2003, the World Health Organization issued a global alert for severe acute respiratory syndrome. The WHO said SARS and its severe form of pneumonia was first reported in southern China and then spread to nearly three dozen countries, including 38 states here in America. Come on, Daisy. Debbie says her rehabilitation took six weeks before she fully recovered in 2003. Today, her health remains fragile. And I have very little air capacity. From my pulmonologist listens, there's not a lot of air going into my right lung. Even today? Even today, yes. Yes. So, so you're very susceptible to COVID-19? If I get it, I'm dead. If I get pneumonia, they tell me I wouldn't make it. Debbie says she wanted to talk with us because of the national debate over whether one should or should not wear a face covering when in public. Her opinion is emphatic. Wear a mask. A lot of what you hear on TV about, you know, oh, it's okay not to wear a mask. Don't believe it. Don't be the one that's in that hospital bed. No one wants to be there. No one. Only by the grace of God, I'm here now. That's it. Now, with the number of COVID-19 cases rebounding in Tennessee, Debbie strongly believes that if we follow the safety protocols outlined by health authorities, the curve will again be flattened. Incidentally, by the time the global outbreak of SARS was contained in late 2003, the virus had spread to over 8,000 people worldwide and killed almost 800. No SARS-related deaths were reported in the United States.